This is Joy News Desk with me, Sweetie Abochi. Coming up, government launches a performance tracker to enhance transparency and accountability in infrastructure project implementation nationwide. We will be live when the event starts. Meanwhile, the National Democratic Congress says the governing New Patriotic Party has nothing to show after more than seven years in office. They claim they have constructed, roads they claim they have done, when actually nothing has happened there. Also coming up, members of parliament on the ticket of the NDC um, say government's performance tracker will show that the governing New Patriotic Party has nothing to show after more than seven years in office. Right, and now the details. Uh, in our first story, members of parliament on the ticket of the opposition National Democratic Congress say government's performance tracker will show that the governing New Patriotic Party has nothing to show after more than seven years in office. Government is implementing a performance tracker to address long-standing concerns regarding accuracy and reliability of project presentations, particularly the use of artisan uh, poetry outcomes. NDC, please take a look at the report. Joy was one of the stations that followed through and exposed the many lies and falsities in the so-called tracker. In my own constituency, they launched bridges they claim they have constructed, roads they claim they have done, when actually nothing has happened there. In my constituency in Wim, there's supposed to be a bridge between Aka community and Aka quarters that they have done nothing, but their tracker then said they have, they have done it. They claim they have done the road between a Guama community and Atonko, which had not been done. They place all these things in the tracker. At least I've given you that of my constituency. Same thing happened in many other areas. So I will not be surprised that they will be launching another pack of lies. But we will check it. And I know you will lead the, 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 charge, the charge on that. We won't stop them from launching their so-called tracker. But let them launch it. And we will check. And just as we did in the first one, and we exposed the four cities, you will be seeing it this time round again. Except that they will follow it with all that. After all, they are ministers. The Ashanti Regional Minister was on a program. He was asked to mention at least five projects that they have initiated in Ashanti Region, where he has been the Regional Minister since they came to power. He couldn't. The current Minister for Roads and Highways was also on a program. And they asked him to mention projects. You know the projects you could mention? Projects that were initiated by the previous administration that is ongoing. I would not have been worried if these liabilities as presented is matched with developments that we see around the country. That we have good roads, that we have a proper electricity supply, that we have proper markets, that we have good hospitals to attend to, that we have good schools, and so on and so forth. That you are seeing investments and you see the liabilities, there wouldn't have been any problem. Like the previous administration did. You, we invest heavily in, say, the Ghana gas, and so it's repaying for itself. You invested in, in airports, it's paying for itself. You invested in hospitals, and we see this around, roads and what have you. But this huge jump, this huge liability cannot be matched with developments that we will see. So it has remained phantom uh, uh, expenses, expenses that cannot be matched with anything on the ground. But because if you pay Power China, uh, MS Power China, for the Kualugu project of almost $12 million, and they have done nothing, how will that even help the economy to grow? Because the whole idea is to help irrigation so that persons who live from those regions coming down seeking for jobs would not. And that during dry season, they could still continue with farming. Now you have paid almost 12 million of our money to them. You've done nothing. That becomes liability for us. Moving on, the Ministries of Finance and Works and Housing are jointly working to expand the National Home Ownership Fund to provide affordable housing for public servants across the country under a district housing program. Works and Housing Minister Kojo Pongkroma, who made the announcement at a validation workshop 
for a new Ghana Housing Profile 2024 said the project has been piloted and is waiting for the release of funds from the Ministry of Finance for a full rollout. There is more in this report. Access to decent housing is a fundamental human right across sub-Saharan Africa. However, the right remains an elusive dream for many households in Ghana. According to the latest data from the Ghana Statistical Service, there is a staggering home deficit of about 1.8 million in Ghana. The Minister of Works and Housing, Kujo Opong Nkrumah, indicated government is committed to fill the gap by completing uncompleted affordable housing projects across the country. The consequent situation where demand far outstrips supply has left many Ghanaians without decent, affordable shelter where they need it the most. And as a result, landlords, real estate developers, real estate agents, and landowners take advantage of our citizens every day. The latest data, which we today validate, will be most useful in helping us in the sector to recalibrate our interventions aimed at reducing the deficit. And our objectives are one, to accelerate the execution of the affordable housing program of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, my recent visits to some of the affordable housing sites show that we need renewed effort to achieve the objectives of these well-intended projects. There are over 10,000 units being worked on currently in Accra, and there are about 5,000 units planned for the Deswai, the Ashanti region, as well as the many abandoned projects in Koforidua, Saglemi, and elsewhere, require quick attention to be completed. And I'm happy to inform you that despite the limited time and fiscal resources, we are moving with speed to complete these projects. The minister also announced that plans are far advanced for the provision of an affordable housing scheme for public servants under the district housing project. The ministries of finance and housing have also, secondly, agreed to expand the operations of the National Home Ownership Fund, which was utilized to pilot development in Community 22, Tema, by the TDC. The expansion will utilize the fund to commence a district housing program, soon to be commenced by the government, which will develop housing for public servants in the peri-urban areas and districts using local construction materials and blended financing costs on one hand and mortgages to support buyers on the other hand. And we're grateful to the Minister of Finance for the pilot, the lessons learned and the commitment to this expansion. The update to Ghana's housing profile in 2011 is aimed at enhancing the understanding of the housing sector as well as to assess the impact of housing policies on housing markets and the availability of affordable housing. Professor Clifford Amwako is team lead for the revision team. Is that we have a regulatory environment where uh, there are so many laws, so many regulations, and so many institutions involved. But coordination has been weak, and as a result, we have an exploitative private sector that is exploiting the average tenant exploiting the average renter and making life difficult for them. What it means is that people still pay two, three years advance of so, so much money uh, and still living. What it means is that a few people are being taxed to roof their own buildings and then rent them. What it means is that people are using their own money to furnish and f complete homes and then pay advance also to the landlords and so on. So, the institutions and regulatory framework are not really working and therefore the average tenant or renter is always faced with exploitation. So that is the... Ghana's housing deficit continues to be a matter of worry and a lot has to be done by all stakeholders to fill the gap and bring some respite to many, especially those in urban areas. Prince Kwame Kudugan's report for Joy News. In other stories, a member of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Education, an MP for Kintampo North, Joseph Kuma, is asking governments to immediately fix the Fu DA and Jinlo DA schools. 
He says these structures are in terrible shape and need urgent attention. The MP made this call during a joint field visit by members of the Select Committee on Education, the Ministry of Gender and Education, when they toured some schools in the northeast Gonja district of the Savannah region. The field visit was to get the team have a fair understanding of the challenges being faced by schools in the area. The trip was organized by the School for Life and NGO in the northern region. In an interview with the media, the MP for Kintampon of Joseph Kuma said the issue needed to be addressed urgently. I will visit since morning to interact and to personally observe the nature of the school infrastructure we have here. They are all dilapidated structures, nothing to round home about. They need immediate fixing and many other things. School feeding is not regular in the schools by the scorecard system that the NGO use. They interacted with the citizens, that is the community people, and at the same time, uh, the Ministry of Education and that of uh, the GES. The Member of Parliament for Lambuse, Dr. Bright Yelvier Bake, said there was the need to find a lasting solution to the problems. And I think that these are more of uh, policy issues. These are more of decisions and direction of government. And as a member of the ruling party and a member of the committee, I think that when we get back, we will report. To, fortunately, we came along with uh, a clerk, uh, assistant clerk to the committee, and uh, he will, he's going to do a report that the entire committee will discuss and further engage uh, uh, with the ministry and the minister, Ghana Education Service, so that we find a lasting solution to these teething problems in these our communities. Director for Pre-Tertiary Education, Anna Balfour, who said the issues were presented to the minister. Yeah, for the two places that so far we've gone to, it looks as if the issues is running through all the places. One is about the inadequate teaching, learning resources, inadequate classrooms, then we don't have inadequate, uh, inadequate furniture and uh, a whole lot of them. So as a ministry, what we intend doing is that when I get back to the minister, I'm the director for pre-tertiary education. Every message will be conveyed to the minister. And I have also promised them that I personally, I will follow it up for them. A representative for the School for Life said, they were excited about the attention being drawn to the challenges. As within the space of CSOs, this is already an outcome that we have been able to, to trigger a discussion that brings almost every important aspect of this country into this community. We have been able to bring together everybody, including the president, because we have the representative of the president here and we cannot be ungrateful. So we show much gratitude for your time and And our government is launching a performance tracker to enhance transparency and accountability in infrastructure project implementation nationwide. Let's go live now as the event starts. Enjoy. Spark trust and confidence amongst the citizenry and the government. We ask this of you, our great God of nations, and all of God's children shall say a big amen. Please be seated. It's a beautiful morning from the Green Hills of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, this great citadel of excellence and leadership. And from where I say, good morning, Ghana, and welcome to this day of national pride as we officially launch the Performance Tracker, an initiative of the government of Ghana, as a platform aimed at ensuring transparency and accountability in the execution of infrastructure projects across the country. My name is Jerry Ajololo, and I'm delighted to welcome you all on behalf of the government of Ghana. It is my personal hope that this will serve as a reliable mechanism for showcasing the progress and impact of infrastructure projects, thereby instilling trust and confidence among citizens. 
We welcome particularly our online viewers who are joining us by radio, television, and online on GTV, the station of the nation, on Adum TV, on Wuntumi TV, on City TV, on Joy News, on Metro TV, on Adum TV, Oiripa TV, ABC News, Movement TV, Angel TV, Kespen TV, and Asasi Radio. We ask that you interact with us to let us know your thoughts and your aspirations as per this great initiative. Launching this great initiative for us is a Minister of State representing the Government of Ghana. Would you please make welcome the Honorable Kojo Oponkruma, MP. Thank you for joining us. He's joined by a huge number of ministers who are here to show solidarity. Please, a resounding round of applause for all ministers and deputies here in present. We make welcome also members of parliament, honorable members of parliament, excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, our eminent chiefs. We welcome the leadership of the new patriotic party, the heads of the public and civil service and the local government service, directors and officials of ministries, departments and agencies, metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives, the rector and faculty of GIMPA together with other members of academia civil society organizations, distinguished guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, to you we extend a warm and hearty welcome. To officially welcome us all on behalf of government is the minister designate for information. Make welcome the Honorable Fatih Abubakar. The Honorable Minister for Works and Housing and Member of Parliament for Fuase IUB Constituency, representing His Excellency the Vice President for this launch, the Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, the Minister for Communication and Digitalization, the Minister Designates for Sanitation and Water Resources, Ministers of State, the Minister Designate for Local Government. The Honorable Minister of State at the Office of the President, Regional Ministers here in presence, representatives of the Diplomatic Corps. I can also see the Minister Designate for Environment, Science and Technology, Excellencies, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Nime, Name, good morning. I warmly welcome you all to the official launch of the Government of Ghana Performance Tracker. Over the years, monitoring the progress of government projects has always been a challenge. But the Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado and Dr. Mahmoudou Baomia-led government took the bold decision to address this challenge by developing a mechanism that is convenient, credible, accessible, regardless of one's location within the country. Hence, the reason we are gathered here today. We undertook a comprehensive data collection initiative in collaboration with ministries, departments, and agencies, as well as metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies to gather accurate information on government projects across the nation. We have carefully put together this data, removing duplicates and ensuring its accuracy through a collaborative validation process with MMDAs. Through open communication and ongoing collaboration, we have achieved a verified and comprehensive database. The tracker will offer Ghanaians a user-friendly platform to access real-time information on government projects throughout the country. This data is your power. It will be an enabler for accountability and monitoring of projects of government projects towards the national development agenda. The performance tracker is not just an information platform. It is an empowerment tool. As citizens, you are now active participants in our nation's development. You can track progress, identify areas for improvement, and engage government officials in real time. Moreover, the data provided on this website 
offers invaluable insights. It will guide our resource allocation decisions, ensuring that government resources are directed towards projects that have the greatest impact for all Ghanaians. Thank you for your attention. Help me say thank you once again to the Honorable Fatih Abu Bakar, Minister Designate for Information. To walk us through the methodology behind this tracker, it's my pleasure to invite the head of the delivery unit, Office of the Vice President, Professor Kweku Apia Edu. Please permit me to stand on existing protocols. And once again, good morning to you all. I want to call this presentation The Journey because through what we have done, we have created a family. And that's what we always said, that we were building a family of data people, a family of monitoring and evaluation communities. And this is what we have done. The credit today goes to all chief directors, chief executives, the head of civil service, director general of the NDPC, the government statistician, above all, to our ministers, the vice president, and the President of the Republic. This is a national asset, and that is how we have conceived the project. So we'll go through the journey, very simple, and then I'll be out of your way. In the last quarter of 2022, uh, we realized that there was the need for us to start building a performance tracker to tell the world about the achievements of government. Our development partners, CSOs and the entire world also need to know about the good works that the government has executed. And so we decided to make this purely digital. And so behind all that we did in terms of collecting the information, there is a team that you never see. They work at night. And we want to give them also the right recognition. You don't see them at all, but they work at night. And all they do is behind the scenes, behind the curtains, working to ensure that technically what we are doing, the data that we are collecting physically, is given an opportunity to be keyed into their system. If they don't give you the permission, you can't keep the information in there. And then they feed it back to the front end. So what we will see today is only the front end. You will see the back end. But there have been great guys and ladies working with us behind the scenes. So in the last quarter of 2022, with the monitoring and evaluation secretariat, Gifty is here. The head of civil service, Nanaji Kumjom now the time. And he has been succeeded by another great supporter Evans Agridako, doctor, working with the NDPC Director General and also the government statistician. We call them the third eyes. So in all that we did, we brought them in also to help us to look at the data from the perspective of a stranger and how they would provide us with inputs to make the system better. So when we had our great meeting at Jubilee House where all directors, PPME, directors, RSIM, chief directors, head of civil service, and all other stakeholders who would be able to provide us with input into a template that we developed on that day, we went on to strengthen the template by testing it with other stakeholders. Eventually, we had a template and put together a team in the first quarter of 2023, and then data generation started. 
It wasn't an easy process, but we did everything we could in the first quarter of 2023 to pull information from the chief directors of the ministries and the departments and agencies. We want to give you credit as well because you fed the ministries with data for us to obtain what we needed for the work. Good news is that the president had also tasked a special team at local government to obtain information on a quarterly basis from MMDAs or MMDCs quarterly. Religiously, they provided the information. So what we had to do was that at the top level, we had information from the ministries and then on the ground, we had information from the MMDAs or MMDCs. In that first quarter of 2023, we also established a data structure and data dictionary for data collection, where we had themes, categories, and metrics. So this was not only going to be information we couldn't use, but it would be detailed. And in there, we'll tell you the number of metrics that we have, the themes, and the categories. For example, if well, I don't want to steal the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing Standards, so maybe I'll hold off for now. But when you go into the data, you get a lot that you can make meaning from. And in here, we want to thank our directors, PPME, RSIM, agency heads, who came in any time we needed them to validate the data for us. And sometimes we even had to split them in teams at the presidency. We have quite a few conference rooms, so some will be in the vice president secretariat, others will be in the president secretariat, and it was a wonderful experience, all about building the family of data people. In the second and third quarters of 2023, what we did was to bring our directors in together with the chief directors, because at that point we said, chief directors cannot relegate or delegate this job to directors. Directors are important, but as a chief director of a ministry, you need to be responsible for data on the administrative side. So we brought the chief directors in and worked with them, and they were all very, very diligent in helping us to prune the data. In fact, sometimes when we developed our themes and categories, we brought them in to help us to fine tune what we had developed because we felt and believed that they were the experts in their areas. So this also went on pretty well. Not without incidents and delays, but we got the job done. So in the fourth quarter of 2023, we had an opportunity to present to cabinet. Having presented it twice to the EMT for them also to give us inputs, it was at this point that the EMT advised that delivery tracker, um, there was a delivery tracker in 2020, but now we are moving on to, if you like, delivery tracker 2.0, version 2. But you have to explain delivery tracker when you mention that name or that expression. Why don't we change it to a performance tracker? If you call it a performance tracker, there is no need for you to explain to anyone. And here I remember the Honorable Joe Kujo at EMT saying, we really need to reconsider the name. And Veep, or the Vice President, His Excellency, bought into the idea as well. And everybody came on board. So the name was changed from Delivery Tracker to the Performance Tracker. Sometimes, even today, we get it confused. But it's now called the Performance Tracker, as we have it in there. So in 2020, three quarter four after presenting it to cabinet we realized that not all ministers had shown up to validate the data and to sign off because that was also another condition that beyond the chief directors ministers had to take responsibility for data emanating from their ministries so the ministers came on board Banquet Hall at Jubilee House had a series of interviews, sign-offs, everything went on very well. So ministers, a special appreciation to you for your inputs. 
from there, we realized that there were still a few challenges, triangulating data, validating data at the MMDA level. Because we decided that for the performance tracker to be recognized as a truly professional project and system, we didn't want any slips in data we had keyed in. So photographs, evidence of completion of projects, level of completion of projects, all that had to be shown. So that was also done this time in the first quarter of 2024. 240 plus going on to 261 districts. That was a lot of work. And that we have gone very, very far. And we believe that today, the second quarter of 2024 is the time for us to launch this. It is going to be work in progress. It's going to be a living system. And we crave the indulgence of all of you here to work with us to make this a living system. At this point, would like to once again thank all of you who have been with us on this journey. Uh, there is something else that would happen after the launch today, and I'll leave that to the Honorable Minister for Works and Housing, the Honorable Kucho Papankro. On this note, thank you, and I'm done.
for a year. And this is how we celebrate the good that has come to our land. It is the government of Ghana's performance tracker, an improvement on the delivery tracker, which is aimed at ensuring transparency and accountability and the execution of infrastructure projects across the country. Today, we welcome all our audiences online and on television and on radio, on GTV, Adum TV, Wuntumi TV, City TV, Join News, Metro TV, Adum TV, Europa TV, ABC News, Movement TV, Angel TV, Kesben TV, and Asase Radio. It is now time for us to officially launch the tracker. Who to do it for us? Than the Minister of State representing the government of Ghana, the Honorable Kojo Oponkroma, MP. Traditional rulers who are here with us this morning, the Honorable Ministers of State who are here with us this morning, including Ministers of State designate, members of Parliament, Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Municipal and District Chief Executives, uh, Directors of the Civil Service, and the Head of Civil Service, good morning to you all. I want to start by asking us all to give a big round of applause to the entire team that has worked to get this together. First, I want to acknowledge the ministers of state who spent hours working with the tracker team to input data from their ministries and account for the work that has been done so far and who went so far as signing off that you can vouch for the data that you are putting in. Let's give them a big round of applause. The Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives uh, across the 261 districts who've also been going around your districts uh, validating the data sets for us and uh, taking the necessary uh, inventory to key into the system. I want to thank the Information Services Department staff across the 261 districts who've been uh, taking the photos and geotagging um, the projects across the country that uh, have been uploaded on this uh, platform. And you know I'm biased when it comes to ISD, so please let me give them some small funds. Um, the regional and district coordinating directors, the chief directors, and directors of uh, the ARSIM directorates at the ministries, the head of civil service himself, I want to uh, thank you, yourself and your team, uh, who have been very supportive of this project. And if the cameras can pan to the back, there's a team of young men and women, they like to hide. They are the team who work at night. Please rise, please rise, please rise, please rise. And there are quite a number of them are ladies as well. Let's give them a big round of applause. They are the people who work in the middle of the night updating the data. Please take your seats for the delivery tracker. As has been mentioned, this is a collective exercise that is taking quite a number of months to put together. There's a question that has been on the minds of many people, and it's a very legitimate question. You hear people in academia asking it, you hear journalists asking it, you hear everyday Ghanaians asking it. What does my government do with my money? People ask the question, what does government do for me? Uh, there are those who say that when you tune on your radio or switch on your television or go on social media, all you seem to consume is negative news. But is that all there is? Or is there something more that people should be shown? These are questions that have been raised and continue to be raised. In the year 2020, the Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, led in the answering of this question by setting up, at the time, what we called the performance, uh, the delivery tracker at the time. And it was a platform that allowed us to account for all the projects, mostly the infrastructure projects that this administration had executed. And as many of you will recall, uh, television stations and radio stations then went out into the countryside to try and validate whether or not indeed these infrastructure projects are on the ground. But the question remains from 2020 till now, what does my government do with my money? A lot of work has gone on, as Professor Piedu mentioned, and that work is what has led us to what we call today the performance tracker, or what some will call the tracker 2.0. The URL uh, will read performancetracker.gov.gh. So what is the performance tracker? The performance tracker is, first of all, a database. It's a database that 
showcases the performance of the government of Ghana. And it showcases it through the various projects that have been executed across the 261 districts. And this database has two interfaces. One is a website. So you can go onto that website, www.performancetracker.gov.gh, and you can access that database. And shortly, I'll take you through that database. The other is an app. Today, the mobile phone is a very powerful tool, uh, sometimes even beyond what your um, uh, desktop can do. And on the app, on the iOS system, as at now, I'm told, the app version has been uploaded. And in the coming weeks, on the Android system, the app version will also be uploaded. So it's a database. You can access it uh, through a URL, performancetracker.gov.gh, or you can download the app and access that database. And what it does is that it showcases the performance of the government of Ghana across the 261 districts, across the 28 uh, ministries, and across the 16 regions. Now, it's an enhanced version of the 2020 tracker that the government put out. And the enhancement is in three features. First, it's more user-friendly than before. It's easier to navigate this particular database. Second, it's gone through a very rigorous validation exercise. And as was mentioned, uh, down through to the district level, town by town, to geotag the projects and to take photos of the projects so that uh, you can see it. It's also got, for the first time, metrics, data that you can then analyze and do the necessary comparisons, and we'll take you through it shortly. It is um, a live platform, and so even as we go on from today, there will be a continuous exercise to update and to validate. The latest data set you will find on it is June 2023. That's the latest data set. There are some of the ministries, departments, and agencies who have data that is a, a bit earlier than June 2023. But of course, between June 2023 and even this morning, a lot of work is ongoing. And so there will be a continuous exercise to update the performance tracker. And um, as and when it's updated, which is a live exercise, we are hopeful that all of you who are following will keep an eye uh, on it. As I mentioned, it's first accessible on the URL and then secondly on the app. Now, you will find in the latest version with the data set cut off as at June 2023 that there are over 13,000 projects across the 261 districts, across the 16 regions, across the 28 ministries or so, that have been validated and updated on this platform. And I want to once again congratulate the team that has been doing this exercise across the country. Over 13,000 projects that have been updated here. And as I mentioned, as we go along, a lot more will be updated on this platform. As was mentioned earlier by the Honorable Minister for Information Designates, the performance tracker is an empowerment tool. It empowers all of us, all of society, so that together we can track our common progress. The general public is asking questions. Those questions are answered on this platform. Development partners want to know when we give you, uh, you know, budget assistance or specific project financing, what do you use it for? The answers are here. The media is asking questions on a regular basis. The fourth estate of the realm, holding government accountable. What has government done with the resources of the state? The answers are here. Civil society organizations, sometimes across various sectors, are asking questions. The answers are here. And here, on an academic premises like this, you also do know that the academia is always asking questions. The answers are here. The performance tracker has an architecture of about five key parts. The information is organized in five key, may I say, buckets. And very quickly, I want to take you through it before we launch. And before I invite you to ask for some data yourself and find the data on um, the platform. Now, these are the five major buckets of information that you'll find on the performance tracker. First, you'll find thematic areas. As I mentioned, in 2020, the tracker focused mostly on infrastructure projects. We've gone beyond that. And so in 2024, this tracker goes beyond infrastructure and features 22 thematic areas. So you'll find, for example, roads, where you'll find a lot of infrastructure. You'll find education. You'll find health. You'll find security. You'll find the 22 major thematic areas that we often query uh, information uh, about when it comes to governance. 
But we haven't left it just um, at the thematic level. We've gone a step further. For these 22 thematic areas, there's been a further breakdown into categories. And you have 105 categories uh, within which the information has been organized. So for example, when you take health, within the health categories, you will find something like health infrastructure. That's a category. You'll find um, health recruitment, doctors, nurses, and how that is affecting the doctor-patient ratio and whether we are doing better or worse as we go along as a country. You'll find agenda 111. All of these you will find just under the category or just under the theme health as various categories. If you go into education, you'll find education infrastructure, you'll find free SHS, you'll find teacher recruitment, you'll find various categories. So first we organize according to thematic areas and then we also organize according to categories, 105 categories. There are those who also want to find out how about this ministry? And that's a work that, um, as was mentioned earlier, from the head of civil service through the chief directors and the directors I assume we have done. How about this particular ministry? What sort of work has gone on in this ministry from about 2017 till now or 2020 till now, or even beyond now as we continue to track our progress as a republic, ministry by ministry? And so you'll find that 28 ministries and then the Office of Government Machinery are accounted for. So you can query by ministry and find for yourself what exists there. And some want to see by region. I saw, I think, the Bono East Regional Minister smiling when you know, she saw the regions pop up, hoping that she will beat everybody else to what is available here. 16 regions uh, have also been accounted for, and you'll see the projects listed according to region. And beyond that, the 261 MMDs also have their projects accounted for here. So DC will be checking to see how many projects you have executed in your areas against uh, other um, DCs. And if you have more projects, you please send it through the validation process, the very rigorous validation process. And when it is validated, it will be updated uh, on the tracker. Very quickly, the thematic areas. So when you go to the thematic look, we just picked road and transport as an example. You will find that there's metrics on the data from roads and transport. You want to see how many kilometers of roads or specific projects, bridges, etc. You'll find metrics on it. You'll also find the categories. If you want to query by categories, you can find. If you want to see the photos that go along with it, you can find them. Where there are videos and audios, you'll find them. Where there are infographics, you'll find them. And then where there are articles by independent uh, bodies or organizations, that also validate uh, the claims of the government of Ghana, you will find them there. This is just an example of some of the metrics that we pulled up from the roads and transport slide. For example, when you look for road construction works, and you are looking specifically for roads constructed and rehabilitated from 2017 till 2022, you will find that the metrics will tell you 11,974.96 kilometers of roads that have been constructed and rehabilitated in the Republic of Ghana since then. Now, the metrics will do something else for you. The metrics will then compare it to the baseline. So if the baseline, for example, is 2016 or 2008 or a particular year, it will run, the algorithm will run and tell you that the change is about 158% increase compared to the 2009-2016 um, accumulated window. And it will also tell you the source of this data, the Ministry of Roads and Highways. And on the live website, when we go there, you can now click and go into it and find the project yourself, which backs or validates the metrics as you are finding here. And again, once again, I want to celebrate the team uh, of Ghanaian engineers who have done this algorithm that works for us. If you took, let's say, construction of interchanges, the data will tell you that 12 interchanges between um, the period 2017 and 2020, those 12 interchanges, six of them are completed, six of them are still under construction. And it will compare to the baseline of 2016 and tell you that that is 140% increase in the provision of interchanges in the Republic of Ghana comparing with that baseline. And again, it will give you a link to go there, click, and find those interchanges yourself so that you can validate the data for yourself. Another example, the road network size. The road network size in this country is now about 94,203 kilometers. That is a 20% increase compared to the 2009-2016 accumulated data. And the source is there. You can then click 
and go find the data. If you went to the category side, it will be grouped under airport, feeder roads, cocoa roads, interchanges, traffic management, railway, and you can click and go for the data therein. The second dimension I want to draw your attention to is the sectoral report. So if you go for the sectoral report, let's say you query for a particular ministry, Ministry of Education, you will see the earlier tabs I mentioned, but you see two additional tabs. You will see the executed projects and their details also there. And then you see the summary or the count of the project. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the ones that you also see. These are additional layers of information if you query by sector, ministry by ministry. And so, for example, when we say specific projects and education, if you went to the classroom blocks, depending on what you are querying, it will tell you about the three in a classroom block at Dompoise, and it will give you the geolocation in the Ashanti region, Adansi North District at Dompoise specific, so that those who want to uh, validate can validate. And it will tell you the percentage completion as at the time this data was keyed in. And if there's an update of the data, for example, when we started the exercise, there was something that was about 45%. As at the June cutoff point, it has moved to, let's say, 67%. You will begin to uh, see that, and then you can track for yourself and find out. I won't bore you with too many details because we'll go into the um, details later. And as I mentioned, the summary of the count of the data. So depending on the particular district, or if you want it by region, or if you want it on the global level, that's the national level, it will list for you the various data points, and the timestamp will tell you when this data um, was gathered. And as we continue to update, you will see the data points um, also update themselves. The third category I want to speak to is the regional and district report. I know many of you are excited about that one. It will also show you the tabs but it will show you district level data. So you see district level data beginning to pop up and you can query your district and find out um, the kind of projects that are in your district. So for example, we took a screenshot of Western North region and it will list the districts for you and then you can go into a particular district and pick. BR West, for example, uh, you will find the rice processing factory, you will find um, a, a project to distribute computers, you'll find a three-unit classroom block at Bia Senior High School. Each of these have been done by the assembly, also being updated on it. Now, what I encourage you to do is to, as you go through the tracker, pick some of the uh, data sets or the metrics that you find very important. I selected eight, which I want to share with you. And don't ask me why eight. I just found eight to be an interesting number, so I picked eight. Now, these are just a few metrics, eight metrics that I picked from the platform just to highlight. As I mentioned earlier, when you're talking about um, the conversation on roads, you will find about 11,974.96 kilometers of roads constructed and rehabilitated from 2017 to 2020. That's a 158% increase over the 2009 and 2016 data set. Jobs created between 2017 and June 2023 when this data was put in a little over 2 million, so 2 million and 87,000. And to tell you the source of the data coming from SNIT, so SNIT is the one that is providing uh, this data. So for every data set that is uploaded, the, the source will be made available. Government Agenda 111 project, and this is very interesting. Agenda 111 project, when you take the numbers and you add it to the previous health infrastructure that existed, by the time we are done, health infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure would have gone up by 55.9%. That is the addition of half of the stock that existed already to Ghana's health infrastructure. And I think we can give ourselves as a country a big round of applause um, on this one. STEM education, five schools completed, five under construction. And depending on which dimension you are querying, you can then uh, go in there and then find the details um, for yourself. Over 5.7 million children benefiting from free SHS and TVET education as at June 2023, when this data was put in. I know that data set has even improved between then and now, uh, because June, then there was September intake, etc. But as at that time, 5.7 million children benefiting from free senior high school and TVET education. Rural telephony, a radical program that was rolled out. I see the Minister of uh, Communications is here with us. 1,440. 1,448 telephony sites that have been established between 2017 and 2023. And let me tell you what's interesting about this. Each of these sites in a community has a certain number of people around it. Let's use a minimum 100. 
1,448 multiplied by 100, who can now have better connectivity for their commerce, for their personal communication, for um, whether it's healthcare, dealing with relatives to send help or whatever. That is the kind of impact that this 1,448 telephony sites is delivering. So when you see the number, it's not just a number, there's a story behind the number. There are lives that are being impacted behind that number of 1,448 rural telephony sites multiplied by the number of people who live in those communities and how it is impacting uh, their lives out there. Housing units, you know now I'm biased towards housing. These days I only talk about housing. 3,286 housing units um, constructed and added to the housing stock in this country. Um, and uh, I want to pay tribute to Minister Atachia, Minister Sensobuache for the great job that they have done. We've still got more that's ahead of us. Recently, I'm sure you've seen a lot of work that is being done. All of that will be updated to include that because in the greater Accra region alone, we're currently working on about 10,000 housing units. So this is just 3,000 as at the time the data was put up and then the update of the data will be going on. 17.2 million persons now covered under the National Health Insurance Scheme. Again, this is data that I picked. So these are my big eight data points. I encourage you to find your own eight uh, because eight is an interesting number. In conclusion, we want to encourage you to visit the website and download the app. We want to encourage you to take time and navigate and be informed. Um, we are responsible for the information we consume, each one of us. We are responsible for the information we consume. If you choose that you will spend, uh, and I say this with the greatest of respect, you spend all your time on a particular social media platform consuming uh, you know, half-truths, false narratives, etc. You are responsible for that information you are consuming. The government of the Republic of Ghana is providing you a database where the facts about projects across the 261 districts are available. The least you can do is to navigate and be informed so that when you get into that conversation with somebody, you can speak to facts, facts that you yourself have verified on this particular app. And then we also want to encourage you to check for continuous updates because this is a live platform. It will be updated literally on a daily basis. So please continue to check for those continuous updates. Uh, for platforms of this nature all over the world, you may find one or two little uh, challenges here and there. Shortly, we will open up a feedback window so that you can give us that feedback. And then where corrections need to be made, those corrections can be made. We don't claim perfection, but the leader who is charged us to do this, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, uh, is clear that this should be done. We should use these digital platforms to account to the people and take feedback and make the necessary corrections. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the government of the Republic of Ghana, we want to declare the Tracker 2.0 duly launched. You heard of planting for food and jobs. 80% of the grains and legumes that are being planted, even more than come from the research lab and, you know, fields of the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation. We have taken the production of aquaculture from 4,000 to over 6,000 metric tons. We have worked very hard to make it possible for Ghana to become the headquarters of the Africa Continental Trade. We've done a lot. We've completed several years uncompleted the Choir Hospital. We've also found new oil in the Jubilee Southeast, pumping around 30,000 new barrels of oil to help increase our revenue base as a country. The government, since 2017, has constructed over 40 kilometers of drains. The Tamale Airport is now an international airport. We have added, we have upgraded it to international status. We have made this country safer. The road sector has tackled as many as 12 interchanges in our country. So as many as six interchanges you know, at various stages, including Tamale interchange, have been completed, whilst another six are at various stages of completion. Cholera has become a thing of the past. In the year 2021, as many as um, 147 entities 
prepare the account. In 2018, uh, we achieved the lasting peace in Dabon, so there is peace. We have succeeded in zealously protecting the public purse. Indeed, about 20 trillion Ghana cities have been saved as a result of the actions or the efforts of Mr. Tinjura. I would say that within the period, we have engaged no less than 2 million persons um, into permanent employment. Ghana today, by dint of hard work, is a leading producer of gold on the African continent. We have overtaken South Africa, and we've done so because we've implemented policies and programs to revamp mines which were under care and maintenance. We have been able to raise cocoa price from 800 cities per bag to 1,300 plus Ghana cities per bag, which is unprecedented. You can also talk about the leap progress. Now we are covering 1.7 million beneficiaries. Ghana has occupied the position as the number one tourism destination in West Africa. Ghana has become a center of global entertainment. And this government has ruled out the rural telephony project, which has ensured that 4 million people will be connected by the end of its full rollout. And that's what takes me to our Girls in ICT project. We've trained over 10,000 girls across the length and breadth of this country in the most deprived areas. From 32% pass rate in mathematics in 2015, now we have 62.32% of our students attaining A1 to C6 in mathematics. We have ventured into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. We have had our students pursuing courses in aviation and aerospace, building drones, and flying them. Leadership of the ministry acting in close collaboration with the leadership of parliament designed a scheme to have frequent consultations between and amongst the leadership because the ministry provides an interface between the legislature and the executive. We have established about uh, 321 uh, factories in the country and they, they, about 169 of them are completed. As I speak, uh, about nine of uh, the big names, the big boys in the automotive industry are established in the country. I invite you to visit our website, Performance Tracker, and explore for yourself. I also invite you to examine the metrics and find out the change and the improvement in the quality of lives of people. Welcome to the Performance Tracker. So ladies and gentlemen, as we wrap up, we'll show you the live version of the tracker. Um, we'll invite two members of the audience. Jerry will help me with the microphone. You can query any information that you want us to query for you. The people behind the computer, maybe you want to, so yes, Jerry, is there any taker? Any data set you want us to query for you? And we'll show you the, the data we have currently on it. Maybe while we wait, let's start with health. You want to click health for us? So go to health, bottom left, these are some of the metrics on health as we have them. So the first, so for example, when you talk of ambulances, it will tell you the number and compare to the baseline and show you the change, about 123% increase compared to what existed in 2016, the number of ambulances that um, uh, uh, we have been able to roll out as a country and um, the percentage change and how this is impacting lives. If you take ambulance service responses to cases um, for the period under consideration by 38,273 and it will compare to uh, the baseline. Are there any takers? Okay, sir. Yeah, I work for the, I work in the extractive and one of the um, interventions by government is the alternative livelihood and that of community mining. I so, understand, but is there a particular data set you want to query here? Yeah, mining. Mining? Yeah. So let's go to the um, lands ministry. Lands and natural resources right there, yes. Uh, please go down a bit. So under forestation, this is the metrics that we have here. And uh, please go down a bit. And uh, um, digital platforms have been rolled out. This is the data we have here. Under the usage of the digital platforms is the data that we have here. 
um, go under themes. So you go to our achievements, you can go to themes. Um, go down a bit, and let's see if you'll find a theme that corresponds with what he's looking for. Energy, food security, trade and industry, business development, government service delivery, tourism and culture, poverty reduction, water, economy, women empowerment, justice delivery, security. So mining, you'll probably find it under the Ministry of um, Lands and Natural Resources, as I mentioned, that you have to drill down for mining. Can we go back to the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources to see if they have spelled out mining as a separate theme? These are the metrics. These are the metrics that we went through. So if there's particular data on mining, for example, mining volumes, changes in mining volumes, etc., you will find them here on this platform. And as I mentioned, when the feedback window is opened, if you want us to particularly mine for some specific kind of data set and you make that feedback available, we should be able to input that uh, for you. There was one other hand here. I'll take that as a final and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Professor take one then, very quickly. Ah, Professor. Yes, thank Academia you. Academia is here. I want to see the details on jobs. On jobs. Thank you. Um, I think that will be under employment. Thank you very much, Prof. So let's go to ah, jobs. OK, so click on it. Um, let me see if I can see it here. So you will find by institution, for example, Ghana Police Service, 12,795. As at that cutoff point, the date will be there. The source is there. If you look for veterinary officers who have been recruited, you will find it 959. If you're looking for um, the, I'm sorry, I can't see very well from where I am, 360 recruitment of short service commission special duty officers, you will find the source, that's the Ministry of Defense, 528 emergency medical technicians, 329 uh, special medical intake recruitment by the Ministry of Defense, number of, um, you're running a bit ahead of me, number of pollinators, you'll find it there, the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission, 150, so you'll find the various subcategories and the sources of that data that have been put there. Professor, thank you very much, and I'll take a final one from here. Yeah, thank you, um, Honorable. I want to go down to the district level. Good. Let me Which pick district? One dis uh, let me pick my district. What's Afrika, your district? Afrika, 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 North, in that would be Ashanti region. region. So let's yes. go to Ashanti. Um, let's see. So it takes have. us to Ashanti. Let's go to MMDA data. Efija Kwabre. North. North. So we click on that. This is what has been keyed in as at now. And then as I mentioned, we can update as we go along. So you'll find Agenda 111. As at that time, about 62% complete with the corresponding photo. You will find the, um, the dining projects. I can't see very well from where I am. It says borehole dining projects. Drilling, oh, drilling project, borehole yeah. drilling projects. Uh, and the location is where? Efija Kwabre, North District. The specific town is what? What's the town? Okay, so you'll find all of those details there also geolocated. So ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you to get onto the platform okay. to query it and to mine the data. We thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Yonobu Kuju Opon Krumah, Government Minister launching the performance tracker on behalf of government. It now falls to a very important body the greatest beneficiary of this great initiative to express thanks to the government of Ghana, make welcome the acting director of the Information Services Department, Dr. Winifred Nafisa Baham. Honorable Minister for Works and Housing, 
distinguished ladies and gentlemen, permit me to stand on already um, established protocols. I must say we are very happy with this delivery tracker because it's also a step in the direction for government to be proactive with disclosing information. Once we have the right to information law in place, with citizens going out looking for information, this is a very important tool in that direction. And so we are very enthused about this. As information officers scattered all over the country, this is a big deal for us. I would like to say a big thank you to all those who worked behind the scenes, all those who put in every little effort. I was part of it, so I know what it took to get, this, um, get us to this level right now. A big thank you to those who were cheering us on for this work to come to fruition. I would like to say a big thank you to all of us present here for taking time off your schedules and joining us to launch this very important tracker. May the good Lord bless us and make our nation Ghana great and strong. Thank you. Dr. Winifred Nafisa Mahama, Acting Director, Information Services Department, we thank you ever so much. And so it's finally here, the government's performance tracker. It is a tool which would help us appreciate all of government's projects and initiatives, the various outcomes on the platform. The call is simple. We say navigate and be informed and watch out for updates because this is still work in progress. This is how the government of Ghana certainly delivers on the promises it has made to her citizens by way of accounting to her people. May God bless this tracker. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. We shall rise once again in our, our belief and faith in this nation, Yenara Yasasini. Tracker 2.0, delivering on our promises. Performance Tracker 2.0. Performance Tracker 2.0. Let's go out there and spread the word, but please be seated briefly. Honorable Minister, if it pleases you, I'd like to invite you, together with all ministers, for a photo. We shall have three memorable photos, and then we'll be out of here. First, the Honorable Kujo Pong Kruma and all ministers, respectfully, I invite you to the front. We'll need some help with the lectern. Photographers, would you please help with the arrangement? Joining the ministers, I invite the heads 
of the Public Service Commission, Local Government Service, and the Civil Service. Honorable Ministers, please stay behind as I invite to join you the heads of the Public Service Commission, the Local Government Service. The National Development Planning Commission, the Rector of Kimpa, taking their place in the middle of the ministers, I invite our national chairman and our chiefs. Nime Nananum. All MMDCs, please stand by. I'll be inviting you shortly.